Welcome to another episode of School of Elijah. Uh, so good to be able to have uh, a chance to share from the Word and uh, together we can learn about the prophetic ministry and what it means to walk in the prophetic ministry and uh, encourage one another. So if you um, are watching this and you're um, inspired or you learn something, um, yeah, drop us a line, send us, reach out to us, um, you know, on on uh, email. The links are in the description and uh, love to hear from you. What we've been doing is going through the books of the first Kings and second Kings and focusing on the life of Elijah and Elisha, his protege, his uh, successor, and uh, learning how they walked in the prophetic. Um, so we're going to start today reading uh, in uh, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 7, and we'll just see what we can learn. Um, all scripture is God breathed. It's useful for the men and women of God in um, teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training us so that we can be fully equipped for every good work. All scripture, that is. All scripture is God breathed. This scripture is written from the perspective of it being a historical document. Um, from memory, I think, was it? Um, I don't I don't think they know who wrote Kings, but it was um, documented down. But it was clearly um, considered sacred. It was is considered a um, accurate documentation of, of who was king, of who the prophets were and what went on. Um, and so, um, you know, perhaps some of this was written by some of those in the school of the prophets. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just haven't done my research well enough. Um, you know, someone will probably say, eh, it was Samuel. Um, <laughs> but please do. I'm open to correction. Uh, I don't know everything. I don't have time to have the luxury. I'm... I'm, I'm not um, a full-time ministry. I'm a tent maker. I don't literally make tents, but I have to work to survive. Um, and uh, that means I'm constrained in how much I can actually prepare for these um, teachings. And therefore, it should be a learning time together. Like, please write in the comments, who wrote? Second Kings, find out. But I'm pretty sure they don't know. I'm pretty sure no one knows. I'm pretty sure this is just sacred writings that they've, they've collected and they've gone, well, this is um, was considered by Jesus um, because Jesus refers to Elijah, etc. So Jesus is obviously referring to some text and this would have been text that was in the um, the synagogues that Jesus taught at. Jesus would have been able to go into the synagogue, bring out the scroll of what we call First Kings or Second Kings, and read from it. And so he considered it um, truth, and so it's become part of our Bible that we read as the word of God. And and so let's keep, anyway, let's, let's keep going. Uh, we haven't even started, but let's start. Uh, verse seven says, Elisha went to Damascus and Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him saying, the man of God has come here. And the king said to Hazael, take a present, in your hand and go meet the man of God and inquire the Lord by him saying, shall I recover from this disease? So that's the reputation that Elijah had. 
He's, he's traveling. He's gone out of uh, town. He's in Syria. And the king of Syria uh, heard he was around and said, well, I want to know whether I'm going to live or die. The man of God would be able to tell me. I know. So he's gone and asked, sent a, someone to ask him. So Haziel went to meet him and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camel loads. And he came and stood before him and said, your son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, sent me to you saying, shall I recover from this disease? Wow, 40 camels worth of, of, of every good thing loaded. You know, there would have been, um, you know, dried fruit, dates, spices, gold, silver, you know, whatever, clothing. Um, all this would have been um, on these camels. So listen to last episode. We talked about receiving prophets or receiving men and women of God. If you, if you uh, learn how to receive them, you'll receive the prophet's reward. Um, that's what Jesus taught. So this is an example of how to receive someone. Um, very extreme example, okay? But nonetheless, I mean, he was a king. So it's sort of scaled. What do you expect from a king if he's going to receive a promise? Well, 40 camels was uh, co considered a decent way of receiving the man of God if you're a king. Um, verse 10. Elisha said to him, go and say to him, you shall certainly recover. However, the Lord has shown me he will really die. Wow. That's just a little bit hard for Christians to cope with, isn't it? Because it's like he's almost acting in a deceiving way. It's, it's a tough one, this. He's giving... He's saying a word that he knows is not going to come to pass. This guy is going to think, I will recover. But Elisha knows he's not going to go anywhere. He's dying. He's going to die. Um, perhaps you know, when it comes to the prophetic, there's always a lot of what ifs. Okay. So perhaps Elisha could see that the sickness wasn't going to take him. So in a sense, yes, you will recover. It's not going to be the sickness that kills you, um, but you're going to die. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's, that's how um, Elisha saw it. He set up his countenance in a stare until he was ashamed and the man of God wept. That's really weird. I'm, I'm going to have to look at another translation because it's kind of uh, throwing me a bit. Uh, okay, NIV says, He stared at him with a fixed gaze until Hazael was embarrassed. Okay, so it's not clear in the... New King James, who's the one who's getting, who, who it says, ashamed um, until he was ashamed. Who's he? So the NIV is translating he as um, Haziel. So I'll go from verse 10 in the NIV. Elisha said, go and say to him, you sh will certainly recover. Nevertheless, the Lord has revealed to me that he will in fact die. He stared at him with a fixed gaze until Haziel was embarrassed. Then the man of God began to weep. Okay, I kind of see what's happening here. Okay, so Elisha's staring at him and maybe it's, it's the Holy Spirit is just giving him insight into what's going to happen with this man. Who is this man? Who is Haziel? You know, he, he's connecting 
through the Holy Spirit, his, his understanding who this guy is to the point where it was actually a bit weird. Like Haziel's like, he's not talking. He's just looking at me. What's he doing? He's like, gets embarrassed because maybe he understood his life was under the microscope of the Holy Spirit and um, who he was and what he was going to do was being revealed. It caused Elisha to cry. Okay. Because he saw who was in front of him. He understood who was in front of him. Hazia said, why is my Lord weeping? He answered, because I know the evil that you will do to the children of Israel. Their strongholds you will set on fire and their young men you will kill with the sword and you will dash their children and rip open their women with child. So Haziel said, but what is your servant, a dog, that he should do such a gross thing, to do this gross thing? And Elijah answered, the Lord has shown me that you will become king over Syria. Wow. So he's going to become an evil king. And this brought emotion, this brought Elisha to tears when he saw who was in front of him. And what I find interesting is that Elisha doesn't actually give him a moral teaching. He doesn't try and change the person in front of him. He just calls it as it is. He only s says what the Holy Spirit has told him to say. He doesn't um, go, here's my opportunity to change history. I'm going to... Um, you know, teach good morals to this man in front of me so that he won't become this tyrant. Interesting. There's always a lot of what ifs when it comes to prophecy. What if you didn't say this? So down to verse 14 now. Then he departed from Elisha and came to his master who said to him, what did Elisha say to you? And he answered, he told me you would surely recover. But it happened on the next day that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face so that he died. And Haziel reigned in his place. So here's the what if. Like what if Elisha had never had this conversation with Haziel and the king, he recovered. Was it Elisha that inspired this um, has he able to go, I'm destined to be king. So I may as well just kill this guy and become king. We will, we will never know. But there's always that, you know, um, what if factor. Uh, if What if nothing was said, what would have happened versus what was said? And to what extent did Elisha play in raising up this tyrant, like he becomes a, a really bad guy. He becomes the enemy. He becomes the, the, um, the evil attacker of Israel. Um, so interesting questions. Um, but that's all we'll read today from, from uh, the scriptures. It, it poses some interesting questions, I think, um, that sometimes as a prophetic person, God will be able to give through the Holy Spirit insight into people's lives and who they are. And um, what we do with that knowledge, we need to um, be able to be led by the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's not the prophet's place to give a moral instruction, um, a teaching to try and change people. Um, more so a importance on speaking the truth as given by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is ultimately working everything towards God's plan. And we see sometimes the prophetic just plays a tiny part. It's, it's, it's not 
Elisha, he's the great prophet, right? But he wasn't put there to change this person and stop him from becoming an evil king. Because that was a part of God's plan, was this evil. God, God, God ultimately was planning for this guy to be the evil attacker because that's what Israel needed. Okay, so Elisha's part was a small, and it was, um, and if we were to put a like a, a critical microscope over Elisha's you know, ministry, we could say, oh, he wasn't very effective in, in this moment because all he did was it. Ultimately, it seems like he encouraged this guy to go and murder the king. So don't, but don't underestimate your part or the prophetic part in the big scheme of things. Because sometimes it's just these little words, little insights that um, are all being worked together so God's plan can come into fruition. Um, let me know what you think. Reach out to me, please. I'd love to hear what you think. We'll leave it there. God bless you all. Love you all. And uh, School of Elijah is uh, firing on all cylinders this year, 2023. It's going to be a great year. And I just, and just, I just want to put a plug in for um, the Patreon, which... School of Elijah has an inner circle. So if you want to, um, one, support this ministry financially, two, have access to exclusive um, teaching that it's kind of like uh, you think, oh, all, all teaching should be available to everyone. Well, no, you know, you look at Jesus, he only taught stuff to Peter, James, and John, that he didn't teach to the whole 12, okay? And he taught stuff to the 12 that he didn't teach to the 72. And he taught stuff to the 72 that he didn't just openly teach on the mountaintop, okay? So there are different levels. And if you want to get into the inner circle, um, follow the link below to the Patreon and um, part, become part of the inner circle community. Um, all right, that's enough uh, plugging. Love you all. Bye.